All right, so it looks like we are live. Let me just check that everything's working okay over here. Um, can you guys just comment for me, please? I just want to check my stream. Okay, I'll unmute it. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me just go back to my camera here. Hope you guys can see me okay here. Can you hear me? Please leave me a comment, guys. Just want to double check. Yeah. Howdy from Florida, Bruce says. Hey, Bruce, how are you? Uh, I'll add that to the broadcast. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm doing great. Hi, guys. I'll just type that in quickly. There we go. Um, perfect. All right. Looks like we are um, good to go. Linton from Adelaide. He says, hi. Hey, Linton. Vicky, she can see and hear me. That's great. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Let's check on my phone here. We've got a few online, which is great. 24 or so. I'm sure a few more are going to come up. Layla, hey, from New Jersey. Hey, Layla, how are you? Now, <sighs> I'm freezing for Australia. It's, um, I'm outside and I'll show you in a minute because um, I've got another camera out here that I'm going to share a few things with you guys. And um, I think this is going to be a great chat. So let me just uh, put my phone away so I don't have to look at that again. Back there. And um, Peter Brady says, hi, Marie from Colorado. Hey, Marie, how are you? All right, let's get into my little presentation. Okay, so the reason I call my website share inspire create is because those are my values that's uh, that's what i believe in i want to share my knowledge i want to inspire you guys and i want to show you how to create things so that's the format i'm going to have for this live show the share inspire create live show so let's run through this can you guys see this presentation okay let me just check on my phone yes it looks like it's coming through okay so the first part is share so what am i going to share today here we go I'm going to share something I've been working on for the last two months. And sorry, I am outside, so there will be noises of dogs and kids and vehicles and everything. But it's a lot, it's a lot better outside. I love being outside. I'm, I'm not a uh, inside person. And I got my tea here to warm me up too. So cheers. Maybe a little later I'll have a, a beer or a wine. Maybe a wine because it is getting into winter. What's well, winter in a couple of days' time? So back to the story. What have I been doing? If you've been watching my posty adventures, you'll notice that I was interviewing a guy, Frank Future, from Imagine Cruises. And I've been telling his story. And Frank got hold of me. I haven't finished telling his story, by the way. I'm kind of put that on hold while I got the, the Port Stevens live thing happening. Frank got hold of me and he said, look, we can't do any tours anymore. We can't take people out to look at uh, dolphins and whales. What are we going to do? Can you film from my boat? and then post it online so that people can actually enjoy, you know, seeing dolphin and whales in Port Stevens where I live. And I looked around and I noticed that these guys in Africa were doing these live safaris. And as soon as I saw what they were doing on YouTube, I said to Frank, this is what we got to do. We got to do live uh, tours of the dolphins and whale watching. So that's what I've been working on for the last two months. So whenever there's a crisis, a pandemic, and no one can do anything, and we're all forced to stay inside, we're forced to change, often there's a um, opportunity in crisis. So that's what Frank and I have been working on. And that's what I want to show you guys, what I've actually put together, because it's taken quite a lot of uh, research and investment and trial and error to get something that's working and we're about to put this onto the boat so let me go back to my camera here camera one and hopefully you guys can see me in a second and i'll show you my little box that i'm working on Ugh. all right so here it is i hope you guys can see that okay looks like we can okay so what is this <laughs> this is a switcher and it's called the a black magic atem mini pro and i ordered this it's just come out it's just been produced and what it does is it switches between four live feeds and they're all hdmi input feeds and i can actually switch between them so i can go switch, uh, feed one 
feed two, feed three, and feed four. And it can go over here. I can actually go live straight to YouTube or Facebook or whatever, straight from this box. Like you don't need a computer. And it connects to a little uh, broadband, like a um, cellular phone router, which is in another box down here. But the reason I wanted to show you guys, and I've got a little screen up here too, uh, where I can display everything that's happening. And this over here is a radio or video uh, receiver. So it goes through a radio signal. So it's, it receives it from this camera over here, which I'll put on in a second. So this has got a transmitter on the top, and it transmits to this one, and then that feeds into number three over there, which I'll keep on. And then I'll show you what's actually happening. So, whoops, let me, where can I put this? It won't disturb anything there. I'll put that down. Okay, so let me switch to, well, I better turn the camera on first. This video camera. So I'm leasing this video camera. It's a ca Canon, what is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, there we go. XF405. So it's, just because I know Canon stuff, that's why I'm using it. Okay, so it looks like it's going through. I'm going to go to this video feed, Black Magic. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys my little setup here from this video feed. So I'm going to walk back a little. All right. So yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but here's my little Black Magic box, the ATM Mini. There is my Netgear cellular router with a antenna on the top. And then I've got my laptop over here, as you can see, my T. <laughs> and this is my little setup here with, um, with my camera. So that's the camera I'm filming with. And then there's my view. There's my little setup. So that was my little show and tell. <laughs> we'll go back to me over here. Let's change the camera to me. There we go. All right, so hope you guys get to see my little setup there. What do you guys think? <laughs> Comment in the comments here. So hey Juan, you've joined us. Nice to see your setup, great. Um, and I'll turn this off, uh, this camera off. So that's live through the ATEM Mini. Uh, Vicky says, hey, what a beautiful view. Yeah, we got a, it's an amazing view. I mean, I'll, just, I'll turn this on and show you guys again if you want. I'll turn the camera on. And the great thing about this camera is it's actually got these little ND filters built in. So I can click and change my ND filters. So I've got a quarter ND filter, I got a 16th, 116th, so that's, I think it's a two stop and then a three stop, 164th of the light gets through. So um, let's, I'll, I'll focus on um, on my view here. I'll just overexpose a little bit with this camera. And we'll switch back to that view, which is my Blackmagic design. All right, so yeah, so that's our, our view, a house in front of us, and then the water's way down there. And that's the bay. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to hold it as still as I can. I'll put the um, image stabilizer on, powered image stabilizer on, and we'll see if it helps. All right, so there's our view. And then we back up to bush back here, which is really nice. All right, <laughs> we'll go back to we'll go back to me over here. So there it is, guys. That's the uh, that's what I wanted to show you in the um, the share bit. Um, do you guys have any questions about the live feed? It's called um, if you go to portstevens.live, you should get a link there to the YouTube channel. We're going to go live, or we're going to launch this thing on the first 
of June. So Monday, this Monday, which is, if you're in America, it'll be Sunday afternoon for you, is when it happens. So that's our, that's going to be our official first live session. We've done four, I've done five live sessions from the boat already, testing things out, getting things ready. And um, it should be fun. So Peter says, is that where you surf? No, Peter, that's... Um, <laughs> That's the bay, so there's no waves in there. That's uh, we're in a in a port. It's Port Stevens, and that's the bay. So there's no waves, but you can go sailing over there. Surfing is the opposite direction. It's that way. There's over over some hills, and that's where the surf is. Um, awesome guys. So there we go. That's my my share little little share thing. Let's go to my presentation again. Here we go. So Port Stevens Live is what I've been working on with Frank. Oh, and I also wanted to mention everyone from my original boot camp safari. Oh, geez, I'm missing you guys. I really am. <laughs> we were supposed to have been in Africa this time, well, a couple of weeks ago, and, and probably have come back by now. But this time last year, we were in Africa, and um, I really do miss everyone from the boot camp safari. And I'm um, really looking forward to next year when we can go again. And hopefully, oh, this time next year, everything's opened up again and everyone's traveling and everyone's safe. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. And um, I'm adding an extra week to this bootcamp safari. So if you're interested in coming on safari with us, with all these crazy photographers, um, get hold of me. I'll let you know the details. We're just adding an extra week actually to uh, Botswana, which should be nice. Um, and... Uh, Ron says Brent will be replaying your live shots. Okay, and then Rachel says great location. So thanks, Rachel. Awesome guys. And then um, the last thing on my share list here was my um, posty adventures. I'm going to get back into those as soon as we launch this live Port Stevens live thing, and I got some more energy and time to get back into my um, posty adventures, which I'm really enjoying, and I think you guys are enjoying them too. So thanks. For all the comments and thanks for the uh, contribution. Those people have uh, sponsored my Posty Adventures. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, so let's go to something else I want to inspire you with and I want to share with you is this image I took of one of my beaches. And I want to go in and explain how I took it, what I was thinking. And the reason I brought this image up is because I was showing my wife a uh, the webinar that I put together last week with Darlene and she's like, oh wow, look at that image. I've never seen anything like it. Um, she really liked it. So I thought I'd bring this one up again. I know I've showed, shown a, quite a few of you guys inside Bootcamp this image because it was one of our Bootcamp challenges and uh, masterclasses uh, in-camera movement challenge. And I want to um, just go back into this image because I think it, it deserves another look at and maybe I should actually print it and put it on my wall somewhere. So let's see. All right, here we go. I've got it up on the screen now. I hope you guys can see that. No, you can't. I need to change back to uh, desktop. And I think I'm going to move. My face is going to move to the other side. And there we go. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at my phone to see. It's about a five second delay from when I change things to when you guys see, see them. So there we go. Okay, I can see it now. Cool. So there are all my settings on the right. So what I did with this image is I went down for sunrise at my at One Mile Beach, which is a very popular beach near my house, about 10 minutes from where we live. And I wanted to do the um, in-camera motion. So what I'm doing here is I'm photographing and I'm moving the camera. So... I've actually got my camera and lens right here that I shot this with. Um, let's go back to my face here. Let's go to um, camera one. There we go. Okay, so what I was doing here was I was using this camera and I'd go like this. I'll just put it onto stills. I'd go like this. I'd focus and I'd go. Okay, obviously I was shooting at a really slow shutter speed, so I put it up to shutter priority mode, and I believe that is 
Um, one fifth of a second. Okay, so I shot, was shooting at one fifth of a second. So I go back to one fifth of a second. Yeah, you probably can't see it's too far away. And that's what I do. I'd actually move. Oops. <laughs> there goes the mic. Sorry. Uh, okay. Good one. Good one, Brent. <laughs> Live. Okay. There you go. I'll move back a bit. All right. So what I do is I focus and then I move the camera like this. Yeah, it sounds a bit better. That's one fifth of a second. And then I'd move it sometimes a little faster, like this, or like this, this way. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing, moving the camera, and having that sideways movement on that image. So let's go back to that image and see what it, what it looks like. So I'll go back to desktop. There we go. Okay. So there we go. If you can see that image, and we may even, what I might do is... I don't know if I can see this as a full screen image. Mm, don't know. Let's move it across here. Yeah, no, what am I doing there? Okay. So, okay, I can zoom in a little. Okay, and we can have a look at this image. Okay, so I shot it at one fifth of a second. I had my my um, aperture at in auto mode, so it ended up being f13. My focal length was 70 mil, so I would zoomed in, and I was trying different zoom length I was starting at 24 and going all the way to 105 and seeing which one worked so this one ended up being 70 mils and the reason I chose 70 mils is because I wanted to have those textures in the foreground they were catching that sunrise so the sun was rising and and bouncing off the beach and it's got these uh, textures where the waves are coming in and out and that came up <laughs> hey Dave Dave uh, Bluey is on online, so hey Bluey, how are you? <laughs> um, so he's online, that's great, um, and a few others, Vicky, uh, perfect. So that's how I photographed this image. You'll notice the the textures in the in the water because I'm moving forward, and that's where the waves are actually breaking. And then I got that sunrise over the horizon. Now it's really important when you're doing this in camera motion to make sure that your you are moving perfectly uh, horizontally. Otherwise your image, the horizon is going to be bent. <laughs> so that's my image. I wanted to run through how I shot it. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close preview. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to open up Lightroom and we'll get right into that image. So I'll just pull up my uh, it's really difficult for me to see. Maybe I'll just open up Lightroom and see. Let's hope it doesn't crash my computer, Lightroom. And hopefully it should go to the right folder. There we go. I've got too many things happening on my screen right now. I can't see too much because I'm going live and I'm seeing comments come up here. Wow, no ND filter. Um, one, I don't, can't remember if I used an ND filter or not. I don't think I did. I th think I hmm, can't remember I may have <laughs> I, I, honestly I can't remember but that's often when you're shooting at a low, slow shutter speed like that you need to actually use an ND filter to make sure that you can get a slow enough shutter speed to um, to be able to shoot like that and do that in-camera motion oh there we go okay great it's on here I'm just going to close down my comments right now just so that I can see my screen and I'll pull up the side view here and this is I'm in um, yes I'm in the develop module and I oh know I'm not I'm in the uh, I'm in the view module let's go to the develop module here okay and we'll get rid of that so while my computer fires up there we go okay struggling a little bit when I'm running like these live things and my computer struggles a bit okay um, I can I move that I move that out the way okay good okay here we go okay so what did I do to finish off this image let's first have a look at so there it is um, ISO 100 70 mils f13 one fifth of a second 
So looks like I used the white balance as shot, so I didn't change anything over there. And I probably, when I've, when I edited this image, I hit the auto tone and it's done all this for me. And then I may have just tweaked it a little bit. So I did nothing to the um, clarity and it did nothing to the saturation, none of that stuff. Let's see what I did to details. Normally I do, I go to the details, I hit, hit option and I, I do the masking to make sure that I don't sharpen any bits that I don't want sharpened. So it looks like noise reduction and color reduction are how they, where they need to be. Did I do anything to lens? Yes, I, I removed a, a chromatic aberration and I enabled uh, my profile for my lens to correct it. And then did I use a slight vignette? So I've got a very slight vignette over there. So I can actually turn this on and off and we can see what, yes. So very slight vignette on the edges to bring my audience into the sunrise. And that's about it. So not that much editing actually. So we'll go back to my grid mode and I'll just show you all the other images <laughs> that I took getting the shot. So it's not that easy. You can see all the mistakes I made. I'm going to go up a little bit. Um, and we'll go to where I started. Oops, that's not it. So when I put my images into Lightroom, I put them in according to location. So that was me with my surfboard. Um, okay, so basically I started here trying things out. So this is trying the in-camera motion and um, whoops okay uh, there you go so you can see I'm starting at one tenth of a second here and I'm going down to one sixth of a second if you look at the top right hand corner oh, sorry top left hand corner <laughs> got everything backwards today and you can see what I'm doing I'm just trying to just playing around shooting a whole bunch of things so there we go that's the create part of this share inspire create show you can see someone running past you and I was photographing them as they're running past with a very slow shutter speed one six of a second one of those morning joggers and you can see these earlier images the sun hadn't risen yet and then it popped through the clouds so you can see it's just starting to pop through the clouds here and then it popped through the clouds so there's an image and I wanted to compare this to the other one there's an image I shot at 125th of a second you can see the birds flying in the in the foreground there and the sun had just popped out of the sky from behind those clouds so, and then I got my shot down here just a couple of seconds later, my actual shot, same view, same angle. There it is. So that's using in-camera motion with a very slow shutter speed panning. All right. And, um, and then I even tried going uh, horizontally up and down, sorry, vertically up and down, but that didn't work out so well. <laughs> So there we go, guys. That's my, that's what I wanted to share with you today, how I shot that image and how I processed it. So let's go back to, where are we here? Um, I'll go to my Prezo camera one. There I am. Whoops, no, I'm still Prezo. Okay. Ah, there we go. Back. Am I back? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> All right, let's see the comments that are coming up here. Um, Ron says he likes shot 180 and he liked the running shot. Thank you, Ron. Vicky says some nice abstracts. That's what I call my mistakes. <laughs> but sometimes, Vicky, you want to actually do make an abstract on purpose. And that's what I was doing there. Doing there. So anyone got any more questions about my abstract image I've got over here. Okay, we'll go back to my presentation. Uh, there we go, the create section. So I've run through that. And then I'm going to run through a couple of questions. So Gina says, Brent, I'm sure you've, you've had at times had so many great photos of a subject that you're difficult choosing the best image. 
If you can only submit one image, how do you decide which to submit? Is it the image that you personally love or an image that you think will appeal to others? That's a great question, Gina. Thank you. Gina's one of my bootcamp members, so she posted this question beforehand. So what I do, Gina, is um, for me, it's an image that speaks to me, that really, uh, that I love. And I don't know if I really factor in if other people would like it or not. Because does it really matter? This is a, a personal opinion. Does it really matter if people, other people don't like the image that you love? You know, isn't photography a very personal thing? Aren't we out there photographing because we enjoy creating and it's for us and it's our view of the world and um, and we want to share the way we th we see things? That's the way I see it. So definitely, it's for me, it's the image that speaks to me, the image I love, the image that gives me a certain feeling when I look at it. Because when we look at images from the past, you remember how you felt when you took that image, those feelings you had. And that's why we print images and we put them on the walls is because they give us a feeling like that one at one mile gives me a feeling of tranquility, just a, a real calming feeling because it was a sunrise, beautiful morning, very small waves, hardly anyone on the beach uh, before the pandemic even. And um, I just, yeah, for me, that's just a magical moment. And that's why I love that image. Obviously, I chose the best one from that morning. I was there probably 20 minutes shooting, maybe half an hour. And that one really speaks to me. It speaks more to me because of the abstract nature of it, the artistic feeling. So, yes, thanks thanks for asking that question. Um, and Ron says, in camera motion is our next challenge. No, Ron, we've already had that one. Uh, we'll do another one. Actually, that's what I wanted you guys to give me some ideas of what, what kind of bootcamp challenge you want for next month. So put them in the comments, what kind of, what challenge you want, because a lot of us are still in lockdown, even though here in Australia, they're starting to open things up a little bit. We can start traveling as of the first and they can have more than 10 people in a restaurant, which is nice. Um, the pubs are opening, so I'm sure a lot of people are happy about that. Maybe, hey, Bluey, are you happy about that? Um, and um, are there, so thank you, guys. Thanks for the comments. So, um, yes, let me know what you guys want to do for the next challenge. What challenge you want? Something you can do at home if you're still in lockdown something everyone can do around the world depending on it, does, it shouldn't depend on the weather so if it's freezing cold like it's starting to get a little cold in the southern hemisphere but it's really nice and warm in the northern hemisphere what can we all do so gina oh, there we go gina i'm glad you uh glad you like that um, thanks for posting that question okay let's go to another question here uh we'll go to my presentation Okay, so the next question is from Kerry. I'm thinking about printing and mounting a couple of images for an exhibition at the local arts music festival. My dilemma is I can choose to put a price on my prints, but I have no idea how to price them. Do you have any suggestions as to how I can work out a price? Many thanks and cheers, Kerry. Great question, Kerry. Um, let's go back here. So for me, when it comes to pricing, oh, this is this can really open up a can of worms for for us. It depends on what people are willing to pay for an image, and it depends on your competition. Um, it depends on how much it costs you to create that image too, and how unique that image is. So, my rule of thumb. When I was selling prints, and I'm actually about to go see a client or potential client who wants to buy one of, or a few of my elephant prints, and she asked me price, like, how much is it? And I said, well, <laughs> it all depends on the size, right? So my rule of thumb is whatever it costs you to print that image, so printing and framing it, so let's just say it's a canvas and you 
print it on a large canvas and you wrap it around the frame. And let's just say it cost you a hundred dollars just as a ballpark to print a large print and wrap it around the frame, sell it for between three and 500. So between three and five times your cost of creating that print, that's what the retail cost should be. Cause then you're covering your time, your um, camera that you've been using all your filters, all that good stuff. And you're making a decent profit and it allows you to print a couple of more and display them um, at your uh, local art show or anything like that. So I used to try and go for the times five, five times the cost of doing, of printing would be a really good number for me. So there we go. All right, let's, uh, let's see a couple of questions here. Ron says, I run an international forum on Discord and that is the challenge we're, we're doing. New members are welcome if you wish to email me. Discord. I don't know what that means, Ron. Um, ooh, Kim says, not sure if it has been done, but maybe the human body for the next challenge. <laughs> Good one, Kim. I like that. Uh, maybe we should do a portrait challenge. I know a lot, we've got a lot of landscape um photographers inside bootcamp and maybe it's time to photograph a portrait in a landscape fashion yeah that's a good one how about small things so Layla says how about small things micro macro or maybe symmetry yeah those are those are really good suggestions and peter thinks thanks for sharing photo that means something to you regardless of what other people would like it's bold to stick your neck out regardless of what other people think yes it is <laughs> And sometimes you get your head gets chewed off, uh, Peter, but um, you know what? Like we all adults here, so if you believe something, why not say it? As long as it doesn't offend people, you're not you know, taking it out on people, I suppose it's fine. And uh, Juan says, good one too. I'm not sure what you're meaning, Juan. Are you meaning the, what I, my idea about uh, showing people what you love or are you meaning about Kim, Kim's, um, about the human body challenge. <laughs> Agree with you, Peter. Okay. So there we go. Ron says he agrees with Peter. That's great. All right. Let's run to another question. Um, and I think I put it in my presentation. I didn't have too many because I didn't want this to run too long. I know some of them have run like over an hour. Um, so Sarah asked, what do you use for backup photo storage, solid state or cloud storage? A great question, Sarah. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Let's go back to my face here. So what I don't use cloud storage. I haven't. I've been considering it. And I know my friend Johnny has used it and a few other people. Maybe you guys can put, put, put in the comments below what you use as cloud storage if you do and which ones you recommend. I know there's quite a few photographers use them. I just use these little, um, <laughs> my little hard drives and I make sure that I back everything up onto two, so two different places. So here's another one. And often they, you can get them reasonably cheap nowadays and they qu are quite fast. So I just put them in these. So there we go. There's my video backup. <laughs> um, and I put them in these cases and I carry them around. Um, but the reason being is in Australia, our broadband hasn't been that great. And we've often got limitations on how much data we can upload and download. Uh, I know in, in the States, you've got like unlimited. We do here too, but it's it's a bit more expensive. expensive. Um, yeah, so put some comments below if you guys use any cloud storage, backing things up to a cloud, which is a really good idea. It's just when you're shooting raw images or video, like 4K video or 1080p video, it eats up that storage really fast. I mean, I've got so many damn hard drives hang lying around. The other day I was trying to find something. I had to dig through about 10 just to find uh, which which one had it. So, so one says um, it's expensive at this time. Maybe in the future it'll be cheaper. He uses hard drive drives g drive yeah yeah hard drives are quite cheap uh, right now the only problem with hard drives is 
if you've got them all in one location, let's just say your house and you, you away and your house burns down, you've lost everything. That's the big problem. So you should, if you can, distribute your hard drives. So have copies somewhere else just in case your place burns down. Um, so Kim says, my suggestion wouldn't be limited portrait style, but photographing the body in different ways. Yeah, I like that one, Kim. The body. Hmm. Are we going to make it a PG one or not? <laughs> uh, funny. All right. Anyone else got any uh, suggestions on cloud storage? Does anyone use cloud storage? Yeah. Um, there we go. Not seeing anyone else that uses cloud storage. Uh, too scared to do that. So, came, came in. Cayman Drama. I don't know who that is. Cayman Drama. <laughs> uh, she is, I think it's, I'm not sure that, but, uh, but they say that they use both cloud and external. So that, Cherie, hey, Cherie, Cherie Ebanks from um, the Cayman Islands. Okay, great. It's Cherie. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's get back to my prezzo here. Let's go to. Um, Let's see if there's any other questions I put in here. I just took a couple there. Uh, ah, yes, okay. So Kerry asked a question over here. Um, I'd like your advice on what cameras to buy my husband. He isn't one for settings, changing lenses, and anything complicated. He would like to take high-quality photos of animals that can be reproduced on social media as well as displaying in much larger formats like calendars, magazines, and auctions. Great question, Kerry. Thanks for posting that. I'll go back to my camera. Yeah. Um, when it comes to camera equipment, I always send people to a website called DP Review, Digital Photo Review dot com. DP Review dot com. And in D in DP Review, let me go to my um oops. Let me go. Okay, let's go to desktop. Okay, I'm going to bring up DP Review here, dpreview.com. Okay, um, let's see. So in DP Review, they've got a buy, buying guide over here. Uh, there we go. So if you hover over that, it gives you all sorts of things so best camera bargains best cameras under certain value um, best lenses best compact zoom best cameras for travel landscapes all that good stuff okay hold on we um yep so you're seeing that still so i go here because things change so quickly when it comes to photography that you and i i struggle to keep on top of what's new and what isn't so i love my canon gear and I know they've kind of been eclipsed by Sony in the last few years, especially when it comes to mirrorless. But it looks like Canon's bringing out one that's finally going to catch up. But I've got a whole bunch of Canon lenses. And I've got this one, which is my Sigma lens for the for my Canon camera. I love this, my um, 150 to 600. But when it comes to gear, what I suggest people do is spend money on lenses like really good lenses, and then go a bit cheaper on the camera body because the camera bodies wear out. I've actually got a lens that I've had for um, 18 years now, and I still use it. My wide-angle lens that goes, uh, my 17 to 40 mil lens, 18 years I've had it. It still, it still works. I still go and shoot my wide-angle landscape images with that. And I've gone through <laughs> 10 eight camera bodies since then same lens and i think i spent about two grand on the lens at the time or maybe 15 uh, probably two grand so two grand over 18 years that's a pretty good pretty good value um, so go there have a look i would probably go mirrorless nowadays too if you're going for a camera they're just a lot smaller and you can get a smaller lens that goes with it too so that's what i would do um, there we go. We'll go back to my presentation. But thanks for asking that, Kerry. 
Um, great question. And um, now we're going to run through the boot camp images. And if you guys do have any other questions, um, where are my questions? Oh, there we go. Um, there we go, Peter. Okay, he uses ex external hard drives with Lightroom CC, not the classic, and uh, that I use. Okay, and then um, Cherie says she likes the side by side comparisons of the. You know, I'm sure you're talking about the cameras there, Cherie. Great. Okay, I'm just going to shut down Lightroom here because I know it's going to uh, take up a lot of. Um, take up a lot of my computer resources and we'll get back to the bootcamp images so I'm going to comment on a few bootcamp images from this month's bootcamp challenge and um, and then maybe even edit one or two so I'll go back to desktop round yeah let's see okay great so I've got a few up here let's just make sure I'm seeing it on YouTube Yes, looks like it. Okay, so Andrew, so this month's bootcamp challenge is visual balance. So let me go back to my presentation. Now I'll just show you guys what it is. Okay, so the challenge this month is visual balance bootcamp challenge. And what that means is I want my image to feel balanced. So the left equals the right, the top equals the bottom. So it's not visually heavy on one side or the other. So that's what the challenge is. I photographed this inside this image um, for making my chili. <laughs> so let's have a look at, uh, I think I got my ingredients. Oh, there we go. So there are all my ingredients I used. That's my before uh, um, image. Uh, making a chili on a cool day here and then Here's my after image. I arranged all these images on that hardwood table to be more visually balanced. So you notice the reds are balanced kind of in the middle and the bottom middle-ish. The uh, beans are balanced by the olive oil and the spices kind of add spice to the image. All right, so let's, oops, not me. Let's go back to my desktop here. And we'll have a look at some images. So Andrew Robinson, I'm going to pull this one up a bit larger. There we go. Okay. Um, I wonder if we can make this full screen. There we go. Cool. Um, get rid of the, get rid of this. Okay, out the way. So you guys can see that. There we go. So Andrew photographed this image in Sydney a construction site and what I really like about this image is the the dark the darks and the um, the colors the oranges and yeah really really like this it's a different image I think the um, all the lines the horizontal lines yeah they give this image like a, a stable feeling for me and the blacks and my eye tends to go to the guy with the hard hat kind of in the middle, just to the right over there. That's where my eye ends up. It, it does look balanced to me. The bottom, there's a lot of um, colors in the bottom, but I think they are balanced by the darks and the, and the textures at the top. So well done, Andrew. So let's get out of this one. Uh, how do we get to the next one? Here we go. Okay, this one. If, oh, there we go. So I'll, I'll bring out areas. Uh, areas, great shot. Another really interesting image from his uh, toolbox, his workbench. And it's just what I love about bootcamp members is people come up. You guys come up with so many creative ways of of doing these challenges of um, of get of getting out there and. and shooting something that's in your house that you can easily get to and doesn't this look like the uh, vice grip is actually talking and those are like talk bubbles speech bubbles coming out and maybe the uh, the screws are like swear words or something 
<laughs> I love this. So all the little pieces in the middle and the top right kind of balance the really big piece on the bottom left. Don't you guys think that that's more balanced? Um, let's see. I'm not... I've taken the comments off. Uh, maybe I can get the comments back. How do I get the comments back? Here we go. Pac-Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cherie says Pac-Man. Okay, and Kim said, yeah, great image. We never thought to take one like that. And then Sig says, uh, looks like Pac-Man. Yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Oh, now I've got the comments up the side. So great. I'm going to move this... Um, Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to figure out how to use this live thing. It doesn't always do what I want it to do. So um, maybe I'll move the comments to the right, and then I can actually shut this down. So great shot there, Erez. Perfect. And Erez is from um, Israel. So excellent shot. And we'll bring this one up. And this is Kerry. This image is perfectly balanced, I think. I like the, the panorama that Kerry's used here, the chilies, the uh, complementary colors, the uh, reds against the greens, so they're opposite on the color wheel. Um, love it. Love this image. Um, and I also like the background and the, and the little bit of um, framing, matte, kind of the matte look you've given it at the bottom, like the drop shadow. So what else? The image is perfectly sharp, it looks like. Yeah, they like the shell. I like the soft light on these on this image too with the highlights on those chilies. So great image. There's nothing I would change on this shot, Kerry. Not that I can see. Yeah, it's for me it's perfectly balanced. Nothing nothing needed done there. All right, what about this one by Laura? Let's have a look at this. So Laura did a couple of food shots, and this is one I've chosen because it's a little bit different to all the others. So where does your eye go in this image, guys? So if you're looking, what, which part of this image attracts your eye the most? I'll look at the comments in a sec. Yeah, I'll move this across there. Uh, I'll make this... There we go. So for me, it's the 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 warmer colors from the jam, the jam at the top left and the bottom right, and especially the jam bottom right on top of the um, cheese. It looks like cheese over there. The middle. Oh yeah, the middle. Okay. Kim says the middle. Cherie says the middle. Yeah, the yellow's in the middle. Yeah, that that's. And so what I do with these images is I kind of go back a little bit and I, clo I squint a bit, close my eyes a bit and I squint so everything's blurred and then I, I look at that and I see, okay, where, what part att attracts my eye the most? And actually, you guys are right. When I do that, it goes to the, uh, the butter or the cheese in the middle and the cheese down here, the yellows for some reason. And Peter says it goes to the green in the middle. Yeah, not so much for me because it's a bit darker. It kind of fades away when I squint my eyes. But what I do like is how it's balanced. So the um, the jam at the top and the bottom balance each other. The yellows kind of balance each other. And then I like how the breads on the bottom left and the bread on the bottom right, the textures in there and the details kind of balance each other. So green in the middle. Peter says green in the middle. Ron says uh, he lost the audio from me. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, let me just check my. Um, let me check things here quickly. Uh, audio, where are we? Um, let's see. Let's just check. Loud and clear. Okay, great. You guys can still hear my audio. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, not quite sure why you lost the audio um ron don't know okay everyone can hear me okay great so laura great job you did here i like how you've cropped this image too and it's a square so that's 
that's even more balanced, I suppose, than, than any other crop. And um, yeah, there's some great detail in this image too. So beautiful shot. And I can see how much effort you guys have gone to in this challenge. So well done. Pat yourselves on the back. Everyone's done a great job over here. So Nick, another one that really stood out to me were these, were these two images that Nick put, um, put out there from his workshop or from the garage. So he did this one first, which I really liked. Um, a nice clean shot, woodworking with some some bits of wood that have been carved out of this. But but this next one really jumped out to me. This one. Wow. See, this to me, even though the first one, the tools are all nice and clean and um, they have been maintained well, but this to me is how I see a woodwork shop because these these tools are used they're aged they've they've got character i mean look at the details in this image and i like how you've got the sawdust down the middle there a diagonal line that's great i'm just going to zoom out a bit so that i can see it all so ah oh, i love this image there's just something about it i don't know what it is Nick, but you've done a fantastic job. Um, I love seeing images that have character and tell stories. So this one, to me, this image tells a, a more deeper story than the previous one. You know, I wonder, you know, yeah, just, I'd love to know the story behind this, Nick. Maybe you can tell me sometime. But yeah, when it comes to visual balance, great. I like how the handle of this tool is the same as the, the handle of the saw over there the measuring tools on the left uh yes great like that's just looking at it yeah it looks like the light's coming from the left and these are a little bit lighter up on the left here to the right but to me that's a fantastic image uh, not sure how you would change this in any way. Possibly I would take this, uh, what whatever this tool is on the right, and swap it maybe with the tape on the left so that the lighter colors are more balanced. But that's probably the only thing I would try here. But other than that, yeah, great. Really like the sawdust. So Vicky says she really likes the sawdust. I saw this one. And... Um, and the vintage tools, Nost nostalgic. Yes, Gina, very nostalgic. I love that. And it reminds me of my, my friend Macca's workshop. He's um, He's got a lot of tools and they, they all look like, well, a lot of them look like that. And then Peter, like this one, Peter. Another tool shop image. And I like the black and white as opposed to the uh, color one that you used over here. And also like those... Uh, diagonal lines that give the image more of a, a dynamic move movement feeling and the different shapes the of the um, socket socket uh, ends so yes and that to me that's perfectly balanced yeah it's, just looking at it different ways to see what i would do differently on this image and i wouldn't do anything differently i don't think no that's good it's not overkill you haven't got too much like maybe my image was a little bit overkill with the where i was making chili there's maybe too many things in there I, I probably went overboard but this one yeah it looks great so yeah don't change anything <laughs> peter well done yeah like uh, peter brody says he likes the black and white too also and uh cool okay ron i like this one it runs and i know he's got different versions of this image that's a really nice shot i, I don't mind the hard light on this image with the shadow in the top right there and does it look a little top heavy to you guys maybe with a shadow it does make it a little top heavy and maybe the reds are just a little too top heavy so what i would do here ron is probably 
I would probably move those tomatoes, those cherry tomatoes, the reds down to the bottom left a little bit on the edge here, just to balance balance a little more the, the red pot and those big red tomatoes at the top there. So that's something I would do, or even, even move them down to the bottom right, those cherry tomatoes on the right there, just to balance this image a little bit more. But great, I like those hard... I don't mind the hard shadows and the and the hard light the, on that that image. So, uh, what is this one? I can't see it. It's beyond the question. So I'm just going to pull it up there. Oh yeah, Ruth. Yeah. So I love this one, Ruth. And I know you got two versions of this. The image it's your husband having his beer and snacks at night, and I believe you used a window light to backlight that beer and the bottle, and. You've got a lighter version of this, but I prefer the darker version, I think, because it's more of an artistic image to me. I don't mind the shadows. They leave a lot uh, to the imagination, what is behind there. And often, us photographers, we want to lighten up the shadows too much and show too much detail all over the image. Sometimes, darkening those shadows and having the image like a little bit um, under, I don't know, under displayed, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, like not in your face, more, yeah, I can't remember. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but it, it's more of an artistic feel. And an, I like this. It, to me, it reminds me of like a, a darkly lit pub you go into and you get the beer and the lights on the background. And it's, uh, it's, it's more of a moody, moody image to me. So that's what I like about this. So well done, Ruth. I think it is reasonably balanced. You've got the the warmer colors um, down at the bottom with the with the nuts and the beer. Definitely, the glass of beer really does take my eye, grabs my eye, and won't let it go. And I like how you kind of got the rim lighting on the the beer bottle in the background there. So well done. And I know you spent a lot of time putting this together. So thank you. Uh, Peter says she li he likes the lighter version she she did. That's great. And that's what boot camp's all about because everyone's got a different opinion on what they like and it's really good to hear everyone else's opinion on how you th they th how we all think you can make the image better. Uh, Linton says his preference is the, the uh, darker version. And Stephen, understated. Understated. That's the word I was looking for, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> It's an understated image. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I need another coffee or tea. Um, I've been up too early. And I'll do a last one. Yeah, Cherie, you are online. And thank you for being here. Um, Cayman drama, Cherie. Thank you. <laughs> this image, wow, Cherie. It's, I can see how much work you've put into this. You've definitely taken your time styling this image. It is perfectly balanced. And I know you've tried to remove the dark. Is this the one? I think I might have taken. Yeah, this is the after. Okay, this is the one that you've removed the dark and um, blot at the top of the image there. I didn't mind it so much, the top right of the image. But yeah, love it. You've done a great job here with the spices little wisps of color love that yeah great image i like the um the different colors on the on the top here with the uh, lime and the lemon and the tomato and then you've got the opposite at the bottom there so when it comes to visual balance great image well done excellent shot um that's yeah so i think this has been a really interesting challenge for us all because i haven't really done too much still life um before um let's go to the actual uh we'll get rid of there we'll go to visual balance oh and this one i wanted to also talk about this one from rodney i like this shot all the old cameras so i'm going to pull it up over here so right now am inside the visual balance bootcamp challenge so if you're not part of bootcamp make sure you sign up to the waiting list and i'll let you know when we open it up again but um yeah so many look at that um 
1,300 comments for this month. Wow, well done guys. There's been a lot of activity in here. Um, and this one I really like. Look at this shot. All the old cameras on the chopping board where you actually cut the prints. So that's another great uh, visually balanced image. Well done. Wow, it's been a been an amazing month. And I know I've been a little missing in action sometimes inside Bootcamp. So sorry, guys, I've had a lot on my plate this month. But uh, this next month is going to be, I'm going to be in there quite a lot. And I would love some more suggestions on what you guys want as your next month's challenge. So that's a great one. Ruth, that's a really nice comment you've put in there. I'm going to like your comment there. There we go. And Judy, <laughs> like that too. Wow, that's a cool shot. And I do like how the reds of this little dress are balanced by the, the warmer warmer colors up here, even though there's a few cool, cool colors. So that's a great shot too. So I may jump in and just give some extra comments. Look at this image from Jeanette. That is pretty cool. So... Um, yeah, there we go, guys. So well done. Um, I'm going to go back to me here. Awesome. Uh, let's see. So there you go, guys. That's um, that's the show, the Share Inspire Create Live show. I um, hope you've enjoyed and learned a couple of things. Um, yeah, leave me comments on what you think we should do for next month's challenge or shoot me an email. Um, I'd love to know. Give me some ideas and then I'll put together the masterclass in the next couple of days and have it out to you by the first, hopefully the first, even though we've got a live, even though we've got the Port Stevens live thing happening on the first, but I'll do my best to get it out to you uh, by then so we can get in there and um, all start shooting for this. So um, thanks, guys. I, I see that you guys are a few, few of you are saying thank you in the comments. Thanks so much, Brent. Love this live format. I did too. And um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm the best at being live yet. I think I've I've got to uh, got to work on it a little bit. Maybe maybe a bit earlier when my brain's working a bit better. Um, inner workings suggested by Bruce. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Juan said he really enjoyed this venue, and Layla, great show, Brink, always inspiring. Thank you guys for being live and commenting and, and um, giving me a couple of questions to answer i'll try and do i think if you guys like this and i do it at the end of the month or after the challenge ends every month and just tell you what i've been working on and grab an image and deconstruct it and then answer questions um let me know if you if you like this format i'll i'll keep doing it if it brings value and i can jump into boot camp and and comment on a few things images that just kind of have um, have been really interesting that I find interesting so yes uh, there we go Cherie likes it yes Kim thanks Brent always enjoy your shows well done Sig thank you Peter thank you for encouragement and Bluey says good show mate <laughs> see you Bluey and uh, oh so Quing uh, Quingfa Zwan says I was think uh, how do you I wouldn't know how to pronounce your name um, I was thinking we could see the dolphins. Yes, we'll have a look. Go to portstevens.live. I'll put a link below this video and you can see the live show. Uh, you can see a couple of past live attempts and you can see where we made mistakes and why it didn't work and why we're still testing. And then on Monday, which is Sunday America time, we're going to go live. We're actually going to launch the Port Stevens live thing. So. Peter says, absolutely keep doing it. Great to see you live. And Bluey says, footy tonight, mate. <laughs> footy, for those who aren't in Australia, is uh, football in Australia. And uh, Ron says, look forward to your next show. Thanks, guys. Uh, catch you later. Bye.